few minutes and and it's on all of their machines so it doesn't take somebody very skilled in a manufacturing setting to run a, a run a system and they're very efficient so they have a very interesting patented design for that where other technologies use a huge amount of energy and compression to do it they've they've approached the problem a little bit differently and so it's one of the reasons that e-energy agreed to work with them so because they definitely have a lot of the elements that are right to make it used in a lot of situations where uh, normally you'd be looking at sort of a manufacturing or a, a processing facility type of technology which is much more complicated much harder to use and much more energy intensive so what's the cost comparative for the uh, larger scale models compared to the small you said these cost about fifteen thousand yeah do well a liter. They, they run from about 150000 on up to about 100000 And that's one of the reasons we're going to start bringing manufacturing into the U.S. and North America, because it's quite expensive to be shipping metal across the ocean, particularly from probably one of the most expensive uh, countries in the world to manufacture things in. And, uh, so that's the range. Hey, how about the emissions characteristics of the fuel? And have you tested for ASTM conformance to gasoline? Yeah, well, well, I don't have the ASTM data, but we can certainly share with you. Uh, there's a major Japanese lab in Japan that tests most of the hydrocarbon type of fuels, and we have the data there. And if you know, you can reference that to ASTM, but we have all of that. And uh, it's actually pretty good. You'd find that, generally speaking, because it's from a petroleum product, it, it is probably going to be... Um, easier, it's going to be easier to burn than certain biofuels, and the quality of it is probably going to be a little higher. It's a uh, uh, fairly high caloric value. Um, again, it depends on what you're putting in there because you get different oils from different things. Uh, styrofoam creates a very interesting one, um, but uh, there's that option as a fuel. But if you run single streams of plastic, there's also an option to return that as a feedstock and possibly have it processed back into plastic. So there's there's some options there. It doesn't necessarily have to end up as a fuel. What's the interesting thing about styrofoam? Styrofoam creates something called a styrene monomer oil, and it's got a very good caloric value. But it's uh, it's something that uh, is a little harder to burn. So when it's mixed, it's not as big an issue. But uh, it's a very unique uh, material in itself. If it was run on its own, I think you could probably reprocess it back into, into foam. I'm not a polymer engineer, but we've been told that that would probably work. Um, if it is on its own processed, uh, generally it would be diluted with another fuel source in a burner system or something like that, maybe about 10%. Um, it's got a very uh, high flash point, so it, it takes a little more uh, to get it need to go in. But, so that's what's... But I think a key issue with styrofoam, though, is if you reconvert it back into that form, you have taken a, a very messy uh, substance and reduced that volume to a fraction of the size. Right. What, what's the process temperature? I think we have said that before. But... Yeah, it's going to, today we'll probably run around uh, 400, 420 degrees uh, Celsius, about 800 uh -huh. range. Of, uh, because don't catalytic ox oxidizers have to be about in that range before they're really efficient or for the exhaust? Or? I, I don't know that information, on me, but probably. And that that's that that guy is running differently than the actual unit. Oh, it has its own. Yeah, it's got its, right here is is that the catalytic uh, unit is that uh, yeah. That's kind of separate. It's, it's similar to a catalytic. And is it, it really just it just heats it and separates out the oil? You're not adding anything. What's happening? No, there's no <coughs> enzymes in this process or. Any, anything being added, and you can see that, you'll see it here. But um, basically, it's heating it, it's liquefying it, it's gasifying it, and then it's recondensed or cracked into petroleum. So it's our little time machine, right? Returning the plastic back to its original form. So. And then what happens with, <coughs> if you put a plastic in there that's got labels and stuff? Is that it's going to become carbon, it's going to become ash. Because the temperature is high enough, those things are going to become. We have some discussions going on right now with paper recyclers, brown paper recyclers. Often people throw bottles and garbage in with the paper, it gets shredded. That ends up having to go to the dump because it can't be recycled as part of the cargo boxes that are being turned back into 
recycled <coughs> brown paper materials. So they said, can you run this? And the answer is yes, but we're going to have more ash come out of the machine. But we effectively can solve their issue of dumping it. So you can pretty much gasify anything, right? But it's just like you said, it's a different yeah. levels of ash you left over at the end. Yeah. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And this creates less because it's more <coughs> converted into yeah. liquid fuel. Is that right? Correct. It, throughout this, obviously efficiency is is prime concern. You've spoken to the electrical efficiency. Um, it, in a given piece of plastic product, it takes a certain volume of petroleum product to, to create that initially. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea, an estimate of what kind of return we're getting back on this? About 80 to 90 percent. The I mean, actual product or, or the entire manufacturing process? That Repeat that question for me. Uh, eighty percent of, of the material that was, yeah. you know, the oil that was. That yeah, consume. it should be eighty to ninety percent. Generally, sometimes it's higher. I mean, uh, yeah, there is. But if you consider the stuff going into the dump or going someplace else, off, shipped off to China to be burned in an open kind of uh, power generation system, uh, if you return it back to an oil. Uh, uh, fuel source or you uh, turn it to a feedstock, there's actually amazing uh, carbon savings in there. So I would say that there's there's a lot of models that will probably be working out in the future, but right now if you ask me that question, it's about 80 to 90 percent of the original oil petroleum material. Again, in speaking to, to efficiency, but this time in terms of uh, dollar economy efficiency, um, obviously the units are, are quite expensive initially. Do they have a projected life span or a uh, projected volume yeah. of return? Well, yeah, the, that depends on the unit. But the lifespan, they should easily carry for 20 years. They're mostly mechanical. Um, we have the data. I don't have it all on the, on the top of my head, so, you know, mean time between failures. Most of the equipment is uh, it's fairly low maintenance. It's uh, not a lot of moving parts to it. There are maintenance pieces, but most of it should go on for a fairly significant amount of time and, you know, easily a life in the investments. Well, let's fire it up. Okay, well, who else wants to show some apple?